Good morning, Max. Max? Uh, milk. What? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage, I just can't function, sweetie. S stage? Don't worry, there won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. I, I guess. Nick, Max is really nervous. That's understandable. Hey, my sweeties. W what? You don't think I should fly, do you? <laughs> if he flies on to the... <laughs> huh? You know, you've got to make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 don't do that, Max. We can't have you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. God damn it. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? I can see it now. The dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that, and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max, really, no need to no one needs to fly today. Nick? What's with that? <laughs> Phoenix Phoenix is considering it. I like the sound of that dashing young lawyer. Oh god. And now the case of one. What? What? Your honor, get a get on with it. Oh, sorry. I just realized that the defendant's name is, <laughs> is Billy Bob Jones. So, well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, Your Honor, he does often go by that name. You know, my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here would be mind if we called the defendant Maximilian Galactica. It sounds more friendly. Hmm, I wonder if that is to our advantage. Ms. Von Karma, your opening statement if you please. I hope you didn't bother. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix Fright. Eh? That spirit channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. It did not count, do you hear me? She must still be upset about what happened last time. You have no chance. Zero, zilch, nada. I'm not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of one karma to lose at anything. I guess being born with the name von Karma is a free pass to be arrogant and annoying. Watch and learn, Mr. Phoenix writes. I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. M -m me Guilty? Uah, what are you talking about? It will be my ultimate revenge. But it's not like it'll bring her dad back. There, opening statement complete. Now let's hurry and wrap up this waste of a time. Very well. You may call your first witness, Miss Von Karma. Detective Dick Gumshoe, get up here now. Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, Detective. Don't mention it. It's no trouble at all. I've been looking forward to this. Very well. I would like you to begin by shedding light on the event in question. At your service, sir.
All right, detective. You may proceed with your testimony. The night of the crime, snow was falling until 10 until 9:40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. All of the circus performers were gathered in the big top to practice their routines. The practice session broke up at around 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15. The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. The cause of death was blunt force trauma that snapped a vertebra in his neck. I see. He was beaten to death. Here is the autopsy report for the victim. The court accepts the such evidence. A blunt object. Hmm. Very well. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Did I notice any contradictions? I don't think I did. So it seems we gotta just press. Let me ask you about the snow. It was nearly a blizzard up there until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half was on the ground. The snow froze in place and stayed on ground until the next day. Hmm, the snow. Let me see. There's got to be more to this. Eh? What's the matter, Nick? This photo, right? When you say all of the circus performers, who do you mean? Everyone but the dancers and the staff were there. Regina the Animal T Tamer, Mo the Clown, Ben the Ventriloquist, and of course, the Defendant. Maximilian Galactica and his victim, the Ringmaster. Oh, I almost forgot, Regent the Tiger was there as well. Gumshoe. Out of curiosity, what about the circus monkey? When I was investigating yesterday, he ha That was Gumshoe's wristwatch. <laughs> oh my god. Detective. You are welcome to file a police report after these proceedings. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Regina was playing with Regent, while Mo went back to his room, tired from work. Ben the ventriloquist went to the front gate, absorbed in his own world. The ringmaster and Max went off to the ringmaster's office to talk privately. Talk privately, huh? That's awfully suspicious. You wouldn't happen to know what they were talking about, would you? It seems they were negotiating Max's salary. Actually, Max was asking for Regina's hand in marriage. I'd like you to be a bit more specific about the events at 10.15pm. Um, uh, okay. Not a problem, pal. We've got a witness that told us how the whole- Ow! This is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Hmm. Alright. We'll just have to revisit that testimony later. Detective Gums, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? A wooden box. That's right. The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Carrying the box, huh? It was a rather strange wooden box, Your Honor. What do you mean? Well, it was much heavier than it looked. Not to mention it was locked. Locked, you say? This may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. What was in it? Do you mind telling us what was inside that box? 
Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All that was inside was this little bottle. Bottle? Oh, what is that, Detective? Exactly what it looks like, Your Honor. It's a condiment bottle. What's inside the bottle? It's filled with pepper. Oh. Why in the world was it locked in that big box? There was only one little bottle in that huge box. I wonder if that has some sort of special meaning. According to the autopsy report, the murder was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that, it, that it's something the perpetrator ran off with. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. No, no, no. I bet he made it disappear with magic. Ha ha ha. Oh, that was all. Well, I think we have a good feel for the details of the event now. I guess that's all we're going to get out of Gumshoe in this case. You mean all we're going to get out of him is that little bottle of pepper? Now that we have wrapped up with the detective, I'd like to call my next witness. Eh? I'm not even off the stand yet. Obviously, that's due to you being slow and unable to take a hint. I don't know, but wrapped up has such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. Thank you very much, Detective Gumshoe. You may step down. Miss Von Karma, call your next witness. I would like to call Mr. Benjamin Woodman to the stand. Trello. So Trello's first. I wonder if Trello will show up on the stand as well. I probably, he's almost definitely going to. Yeah. Please state your name and occupation for the record. My full name is Trello Quest, and I am employed as an operatic tenor. Excuse me, the witness called to the stand was one of Mr. Benjamin Wood, ventriloquist. That robe must be cutting off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine, I'll grace you with a song. Ahem, me, 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 me. Ah, oh, thank goodness, it's, I'm not singing though. <laughs> Decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Yikes. Von Karma, could you do your honor? Could you do the honors? <laughs> you had such a good rhythm. It's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. Trello, you know better than that to insult a judge. Shut up. Just look at your nose. You would think you'd have the sense to fix it. It's so ugly I want to punch you in the face on the off chance swelling would help. You know that your nose is the reason you'll never be an A-list star. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What's going on here? Order, order. I demand to know who the witness is. D don't, don't worry about me, sir. I'll, I'll let Trilo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm urge. You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. Now let's proceed. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge, I mean clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. I, th I think I've got the voice. I've got the Luke Trident. That's when I saw Max heading toward the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could he that punk not be the killer? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene. 
You're sure of that? Without a doubt, he had he had on his silk hat, cloak, and the dumb right white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with that crazy getup and his nose stuck up so high? Th that's enough. I think we all get the picture. Just one thing. You said you ditched the clown. That's right, dress boy. Well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Hmm, he's got a point. That's a shame. It was a nice theory that the clown can't be the culprit. Why is that? He has absolute proof. Oh, a silk hat? This was found at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Ah. Without question, he was wearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for this hat to be at, this, at the scene. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Kamp. The prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. Thank you for stating the obvious. Mr. Phoenix Fright, what do you have to say? Uh, okay. I guess she's the boss again today. She just controls the court every single time. Okay, so I gotta press everything. The clown, you're talking about Mo. Of course I'm talking about that old fight. He's so pathetic I can't stand him. Just a little bit of exercise and his makeup is running all over the place. Once practice was over, he was nine tenths of the way to kill him over for good. Poor guy. Poor Mo. We didn't have any choice, so Ben took him back to his room. When it comes to being a first place loser, that guy's ahead of the pack. Then what happened? Once we got to the lodging house, I... I average for every read this. <laughs> Why the plaza's entrance? To do some thinking, of course. It was awfully cold out that night, especially with all the snow around. Wouldn't thinking in your nice warm lodging house have been a better idea? Oh. Mr. Phoenix Wright, I, I think that you should be leaving that thinking to the witness. But I'm a good thunker. <laughs> At least my teachers always said I was. Are you sure it was really Max Galactica? Of course I'm sure. How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Snobby three-piece getup? Get the wax out of your ears. Lawyers, they're lawyers nowadays. You're talking like you're like talking to a brick wall. Max's three-piece set getup. Jeez, could you get any more dense? All together now. Oh, damn it. Thank you. Nick, I think you should put a little more effort into preparing your questions. You saw Max and only Max, right, Trilo? That's right, and that makes him the killer. There was only one person out of that way that night. Hmm, that makes quite a bit of sense, and makes Max one suspicious character. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Is there something amiss in this? That's a bit strange, don't you think? What's strange? That you only saw Max. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? What? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Who else do you suppose this witness could have seen? That's the... the victim. That's correct. If Trello was at the entrance to the plaza... Ah, oh, we got the bopping music. He should have seen the ringmaster as well. Ah! Obviously, the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness. 
before the fitness could have seen him. Anyone with sense could have figured that one out. What are you talking about? The ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Is that according to the defendant? A likely story. If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room, why was he, just as the witness stated, at the scene of the crime? Ah. I see. Seems that at this stage, I have no reason to doubt this witness's testimony. And there are clearly no conclusive contradictions. Wait, is this over already? He's right. A brilliant judgment, Your Honor. Now let's move along with the testimony. Hmm. Trilo wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with Regina. Which is probably why Max conked him over the head. Um, Nick? Wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over the head? Uh, yeah. I think so. I don't know anymore. Okay, so there's something else in there. I imagine it's one of the other questions. So maybe there was something else I should have asked. Oh. Must have been this one. So 10.30. Yeah, here we go. Oh! Oh, whoops, I didn't press this one before. Will you shut up, you big nose dope? Why are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you believe that we just stand outside in that weather? Well, maybe you were waiting for someone. We were what? Who said we were waiting for someone? Mr. Phoenix Fright, we can all do without your off handed theories. But. This witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm onto something. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Who do you suppose the witness was waiting out in the cold that night? He was waiting to propose to Regina. Well, if he was waiting outside in the cold, it would be for one person. And one person only. He was waiting for the animal tamer, Regina. Wow! You were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Is this true? Well, I, um, you can't really ask me that question. Who cares who sure, I was waiting for that night? What's the point is what I sure. Don't you forget it. Well, well, well. The puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Eh? Alright. There is obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, this is not a good line of questioning, Phoenix. I doubt he would have paid them a second thought. I mean, it's working, I guess. <laughs> that makes bro. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, then you must accept that there is the high likelihood that he could have missed someone else other than Max. Ow! There is absolutely no proof that, that the witness was waiting for the animal tamer. Um, um, I guess you got me. Alright, alright. I'll spill the beans for the real this time. It's true. I was waiting for Regina. I don't volunteer things. Mr. Quist, tell us the truth this time. And I mean the whole truth. Were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance to the lodging house? I've... I was. I was waiting to propose to her. I, I lost the voice for a second. You were what? 
waiting to propose. What's the matter? You think that humans have a monopoly on marriage? No, the matter of puppet marriage is not under review in this case. Or <clears throat> you, or you're the judge. I mean, look at your hor at your horrible outfit. More, more pain. Hmm. Thanks to your to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. Now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. Don't be surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give to her. I kept it in my pocket, waiting for a chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I also had it in my pocket that night. It was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her. So I... <laughs> we got him. We got him. We got them. We've got the ring right here. That's a nice contradiction. You were going to propose. You, a puppet. Don't be so obtuse. Just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love. I guess you're right. Just because I'm old doesn't mean I couldn't propose to her too. Yes it does, Judge. She's 16. Exactly. His honor is looking a little less than honorable right now. Okay, Mr. Wright. Please continue with your cross-examination. <sighs> what was it that sigh at the end? Probably because the judge isn't a fan of this line of questioning either. By proposal, you mean proposing marriage, correct? To Regina? Of course that's what I mean. What kind of stupid question is that? I wasn't going to propose that we become some sort of outlaw biker gang together. Right, Ben? <laughs> yes. Got it? That's the truth. Oh, whoops. What was it exactly that you planned on giving her? Oh, so we need to actually establish that it was a ring. And then prove that we have the ring. You know exactly what I was going to give her, Namsko. The only thing I could find that could match Regina's beauty. Answer his question. What was it? You're going to die when you hear this. It's an engagement ring. It engagement? Wow, those two nearly fell out of their chairs. Mr. Phoenix Wright's joke has gone on too far. Time for this to end right here. Francisca's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. <laughs> Push on anyway. It may be something of a joke. This is a historic moment. The first time that Ow! I advise you to cut this argument short. I'm going to have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Specifically about the engagement ring. I'd like to stick to facts, not sociology. Be sure do you enjoy sweating the details, especially for a man in a black bathrobe. An engagement ring? Uh-huh. It's actually a diamond-shaped stone cut from glass. Even more brilliant than the real thing. I think Regina is gonna love it. It's just a ring. What's the matter, Nick? Well, there's gotta be something I can catch him on. Whose pocket was the ring in? <laughs> Mine, of course. What a stupid question. You gotta be kidding me. You think Ben could pull that off? I, I, I'm so, so sorry, but really. You don't have to apologize for that. He's the one who should be apologizing. Really? <laughs> so you went to the lodging house to give it to her. That's right. 
I tried to give it to her during practice so many times that I lost count, but that uppity snob kept getting in the way. Uppity snob, he couldn't possibly be talking about me, Maximilian Galactica. Then I, when I get a hold of him, I am going to saw his woodblock in half, and not with magic. Well, they always say that love creates rivalries. So what about this present? So you were still thinking of trying to give it to Regina? Of course I am. I spent dream- Okay, it's the same thing. Okay, so it's probably there. So maybe now I can present something here. Yeah, there we go. I was I had the right idea, I just needed to confirm it was an engagement ring. Trilo, do you mind if I show you something? What What is it? What are you talking about? Uh oh. Looks like they're going to double team me now. Do you recognize this ring? Oh, that's 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 mine! Give it back, thief! Thief! Didn't you just testify about this very object? I believe you said. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Why then do I have it right here? Ah! What is going on here? That's that's... Ben, say something! Yeah? Don't put me on the spot like that, Trilo. I found this in Money's room. Money's room? You mean a room they put money? Like a bank vault? Ha! That filthy monkey is gonna get what's coming to him. Mr. Quist, I would prefer it if you avoided slandering innocent fire to my court. Well, Your Honor, money really is a monkey in every sense of the word. Oh, I see. Well then. Money likes to go after the shiniest things that he can find and gather them up. Shiny things? Trilo, when was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was that time, you know, that night, the night of the crime. What did you just say? Details. I need more details. Well, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, um, I guess you might, um, be able to say that? The ring might have, well, it could have been taken around that time. Ah, oh, the monkey. Ah, yow, ow. So then they got distracted. Ben, what's with you? Oh, whatever. It has nothing to do with anything, especially not who committed the murder. It's not for you to decide what has to do with what. Now, Trilo, back to the topic at hand. I haven't admitted a thing, not I, Mr. Trilo Quist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trilo? You know exactly what I did. I chased after that ring snatching monkey money. But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? It's all this slow loafy fool called Ben's fault. While he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. This is indeed an incredible shame. Well, this does indeed prove one very important point. They weren't there the whole time. Prove an important point? What point could that possibly be? There is a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony. C contradiction The witness just testified to the following effect. Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness that sorry, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the Monkey. 
When the witness was off chasing money, there was no one watching the plaza. V what is the meaning of this? Of all this, Mr. Phoenix Fright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with all this little theory, which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Interesting, Mr. Well then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Fright. Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vigilant ventriloquist? Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that, that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying. He's blinded by his rivalry with Max. Well, the defense's argument does hold water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. How? What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie just to get that dork face in trouble. He's not even worth it. I saw him, no doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake, let's flesh out exactly who you saw on the night. Ha, I told, I've told you so many times, you'd think you'd know my story's not changing. You've already changed your story, stick boy. And I'm sure it'll change them more. Where there is one lie, there are usually many more behind it. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah. I'll give you... I'll give you that I was read, waiting that night out for Regina. But that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza that night. He showed up after I had been waiting there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactica at the scene. There's no way I could mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. Hmm. So that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max. That's right, money came, money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max. Then money snatched the ring and you went chasing after him. How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? Well, let's see. I'd say about, I, I suppose, five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived on the scene in that five minute stretch. Well, Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. So you were only concerned with waiting for Regina that night. That means you probably wouldn't have noticed if someone else showed up. You should think about how many eyes I actually have. I've got four, you know. Four. F-O-U-R. Count Ben, of course. With that many eyes, do you really think someone would have slipped by me? Four eyes is an awful lot of attention directed at one area, I suppose. Yikes. Judge is even more dangerous to our case than Trello. So you saw Max coming out of the big top that night? Of course that's where I saw him coming from. I was staring at the entrance through the tent the entire time. I guess that makes sense, especially since he was waiting for Regina. About what time would you say these events took place? You're one of the dumbest people on the planet if you can't figure it out yourself. You already know that practice finished promptly at 10pm. And you already know that I went to the lodging house right after practice. You don't need to be a brain surgeon to know when, 
around what time it was that I saw him. Just add 10 more minutes. I'm sure you can do that. Now what time was it? Indeed, what time was it? Um, what time was it? Oh, Phoenix. Yow! Oh, it's, it was 10, 10 p.m. Oh, yes, that sounds about right. It sounds about right because that's the time I saw Max on the scene. So you testified that you said good evening to Max that night. You must enjoy inc asking incredibly obvious questions. You say good morning in the morning and good afternoon during the day, right? And it's obvious that I'd say good night to someone at night. What, Ben? You got something to add? Let me guess. That's not it, Trilo. You say good evening at night. Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Trilo. Mr. Quirst, I would prefer if you kept, kept your ventriloquist's act outside of the courtroom. Impossible. A performer leaves and breathes his performances. You should know better. There's got to be something wrong with this bit of testimony. It would have to be that part. Isn't that a bit strange to you? Yeah. Why would you be greeting Max? He hates Max. What do you mean? Well, if you hate Max so much, why would you bother being nice to him? It strikes me as somewhat strange. Why would it strike you as strange? Exactly. How is it strange to be cordial to one of your co-workers? Well, if it was simply just being cordial to a co-worker, I would understand. Ow! That hurt. Maybe you should think of having some proof before your lips start flapping next time. Proof, proof, is everything in this world. You should have learned that back in grade school. There's no reason a trailer would ever say something nice to Max. But how do I go about proving that with the evidence? Laughing everything in, is everything in this world, but I'm sure you, you already learned that one. I guess I can give it a shot. The witness will resume his testimony. Easy. Max whacked him over the head with a bottle just the, on that day. Why would you be nice to him? Trilo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina to be exact. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just a, it was just an argument, a disagreement at most. A disagreement doesn't usually involve, doesn't usually end with someone getting conked over the head. Yeah. That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? What? Is that an admission of assault and battery? Oh. Before we handle that, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. The truth is that on the day of the crime, the defendant and witness had a huge fight. There is absolutely no way they would have suddenly become cordial that evening. Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on the stand. There is no way a puppet this lewd would just up and say good evening to his rival. Ah! Are you saying this witness is lying? Is that he is trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I, I didn't tell a single lie. Honestly, I just... That's enough from you, Mr. Quist. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? It couldn't have been Max, otherwise it's guilty. It is my belief that the witness did indeed see someone that night. It was just someone else. That's who he said good evening to. Oh, 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 oh. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. What kind of theory is that? 
the correct one. Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. What? If you had truly met Max that night, there would have been no greeting at all. Which means there is only one proper answer. The person who the witness saw that night was not Maximilian Galactica. That is why Trilo made the effort to greet whoever it was that he saw that evening. Or good evening, as he put it. Oh, what in the world, you? Who would put the defense kindly explain who it was Trilo saw that evening? It was the victim. His towel coat was left in the office, which means he must have taken Max's coat. Which is why Trilo saw the symbols. Considering the ill temper of this witness, there is only one person he would greet. It must be Regina. It's Regina, right? She's so cute. No, Your Honor. It is not Regina. It, if it was Regina, Trilo would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yes. I suppose you've got a point there. It is fast. It was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? You are correct, it was indeed Russell Berry. The person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster, Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trilo, isn't that correct? Answer the question, Mr. Quist. Ah, oh. Aura, aura, how do you respond to this? Wait a second. Well, at, at first I thought it was the old man. But, but once I got a better look at him, it was obviously Maximilian Galactica. I think it is high time that we clear the air about this person. About this question. Mr. Quist obviously witnessed a single person in the area of the plaza that evening. The problem is identifying exactly who that person was. Was it Maximilian Galactica, or was it the Ringmaster, one Mr. Russell Berry? The prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols. Alright, this is getting old. Come on, man. You gotta remember them by now. Here we go again, everyone. All together now. Ow. Yes, yes. We know. The silk cut, cloak, and the white roses. A silk hat and a cloak. Anyone could wear them. They'd even look good on me. What was that? Well, the witness has endlessly repeated that he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we really know that it was Maximilian Galactica? It could have been someone else dressed up as him. Possibly even Russell Berry. What? Miss Von Karma. Do you have clear evidence that the person the witness saw was the defendant? Well, I... That's the case. That is impossible for me to make a judgment at this point. Yes, I think we finally won a point in this one. That is very unfortunate. She has more. You're just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix, right? What do you mean by that? You merely established fun thing from this witness. You established that this, that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on that day, on your effort, but... What? Who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. Huh? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide beyond a shadow of a doubt. An answer to that question, 
and, and evidence that clearly establishes one thing, that there is no other than Maximilian Galactica responsible for this crime. Very well. The court will take a ten minute recess. During that time, I request that the prosecution prepare their next witness. Court is now in recess. Okay, for the YouTube people, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more. If you want to see me record these live, make sure to check me out on Twitch at Kthram. And if you want updates on streams and YouTube videos, make sure to check me out on Twitter at Kth underscore Ram. Bye.